This is a free tutorial from our inventory tutorial series. You can find it in the Godot 3 course in the pro version and in the standalone UI course product. So this will show you how to create an inventory system with item management that we will then reuse in an upcoming shop tutorial. And on top of that, you will see how to work on the interface and create something that's inspired by old school Japanese RPGs. But more importantly, it shows how to manage complex UI in Godot, like some of the best practices you can use. The inventory system itself is a long series. There are lots of interconnected videos. So I took this one, a quick tip that I hope will help you make better UIs. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the tutorial. To give you some context in this tutorial, in Godot, you can use a grid container to arrange control nodes, so UI widgets, in a grid. The grid node has a columns parameter, and as you add items, it will automatically place them in the corresponding column. So if we have two columns, we get two items per row, but if we have four columns, we get four items per row. These item button scenes are set to take the entire space of their parent. So if I open the item button, the buttons just have a minimum size to start with. And then if we only have two columns, the buttons will expand horizontally to take the entire cell's width. And on the grid, if we go down to the custom constants, like the VBox and HBox containers, it has some separation values that creates the gutter you can see between rows and columns. Now the thing is, if I'm to take my item buttons and I make it so in the size flags category, they don't expand horizontally, they get aligned to the left of the grid cell. And the grid system is going to use the size of the button to set the size of the column. If I have one button somewhere that uses the expand flag horizontally, we'll also push the column to take all the available horizontal space, respecting the size of the items in the second column or in the third column. So if we were to have three columns here, it's this fifth button that is set to expand. So it takes all the available space minus the width of the button on the left column and the width of the button on the right column, making the center column larger. One last note about this tutorial. In the inventory course, I show you can use a disabled and flat button that's invisible to make sure that you always have at least one item in your grid. The problem is if you hide all the items but one, if one is set to expand, the grid column, the first one, will take all the available space except for the size of the second column. But as there's no second item inside of the grid, well, the second column has a size of zero pixels. So you need to use a dummy item that will also expand horizontally to make sure that it makes the second column as large as the first one. So our button takes the entire space it can. Right now, the item button and the dummy button are competing for space. What if you want your item to only take maybe a few hundred pixels and not go beyond that? I'm gonna open the item button and remove the expand flag. This way, it will not resize to take all the space it can in the items menu. So heading back to the items menu, you can see now the item button uses the minimum size I had assigned to it. And if I remove it, it collapses, it gets pushed around by the dummy button. If we add a minimum size to the base scene in the rectangle category, let's say 300 pixels, you do that and go back to the items menu, the item will only take that amount of space and it's aligned to the left of the grid cell it's inside of. And if we duplicate this item now, you're going to see the second one takes a lot more space because these items button are set with the layout menu to anchor to the full rect of their parent. And our dummy button 
below is set to expand and push the grid's row to take all the available space. But as we have a fixed size on our item button on the other one, it's going to make it so the second column is only the size of that item button. If I hide the dummy button and effectively remove it from the grid, you're going to see items have a fixed size like you'd expect. As our grid only has two columns, so if I go back to the inspector to the top, you can see it has two columns, and I duplicate the item, it will go to the next row, as you'd expect. So now, how do you center an item inside a row? Well, you've got to use some container. So you've got to add an extra control node or element that will fill the entire row and have the item as a child of it. Let's add this for testing purposes. We are going to add a simple container, maybe with a control node, this could work. Let's see. So we'll add our item button as a child of that control node. Make sure the item is first in the grid. We will center it inside the control node and make it so the control node expands horizontally to take all the available space. And now our button is centered inside the control node. We can call it expander or give the node a name that works. Let's make sure it has a minimum vertical size, 60 pixels like the item it contains. And now when we duplicate it, it's going to take all the available space in the current row. It's going to compete with the other expander, but the item button is not set to expand horizontally, so it will only have its minimum size. And as we set it to stay centered inside its parent, it's going to stay centered inside that expander node. So that's one way you can center buttons in rows. This is slightly less convenient than working with the item buttons straight. And the reason for that is you have an extra node you need to navigate down to get access to the item button's uh, label, amount, and icon, which we are going to change from the code. But for now, I will go back to the item button. So I'm going to leave the minimum size because it seems nice that way and set it to expand horizontally. Save, go back to my items menu and all items update to take as much space as they can. 